Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So here we are. This is actually the second last class. So we're, sorry, we're very close from getting to the end of this adventure. Tomorrow, basically, we're going to be having our last class. So yeah, it is a pleasure to have you guys here once again. I hope you had a great day yesterday that, of course, you took the advantage and could go to bed early. That would have been an amazing idea. If you didn't have the chance, well, still, you know, sometimes we cannot do things as we want them. But if you did, it will be great news for all of you and for all of us, I think, because we have more energies for our, um, well, for our work tonight. So the idea for this evening is that we're going to be wrapping up the last topic of the um, from the platform. And also we're going to be dealing with, um, well, a conversation and a reading exercise. So we're going to be finishing up with that. And of course, tonight you guys are going to be getting the last um, question of the evening as I regularly do, as I ask you guys almost every night. So tonight's going to be the last one. Tomorrow is more about something personal, something that I like to do, but still. Um, so for tonight, that is going to be it. We're going to be talking about the last question and I want you to be very creative, okay? Please think outside the box. I don't know if you know that idiom. El, 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 la frase, ¿verdad? Think outside the box. Ahorita se la voy a mandar. A ver. Eso es básicamente, se refiere a pensar más allá, ¿verdad? De lo, de lo convencional. Think outside the box. Es piensa fuera de la caja. Some of you guys may have already answered this question because I remember this is one of my favorite questions, something that I ask basically to every group that I have. So probably Neftali, Edith, and Evelyn have already mentioned uh, their preference. But for the rest of you, and for you as well, I want you to think very hard on what will be your decision, you know, on what will be your idea. Um, the question is relatively simple. It's not really something too tricky. But I want to know also some details, like the reasoning, the why. You know, I always like to know the why of the things. Um, so, yeah. Then uh, the question we're going to be dealing with is the next. It's if you, otra cosa importante, siempre que ustedes reciban una pregunta con if, traten de aprovecharla al máximo, porque las preguntas con if, eh, nos dan la oportunidad, ¿verdad?, de ser tan creativos como querramos. O sea, porque simplemente se refieren a ideas, no necesariamente a cosas que sean estrictamente, estrictamente posibles, sino cosas que podríamos llegar a hacer. Así que por eso las preguntas con if también son muy geniales. Si alguien, por ejemplo, les dice, uh, if you have the chance to be a millionaire, what would you do? Sí, o sea, esa es una posibilidad, ¿verdad? Si pudiesen ser millonarios, ¿qué harían? But tonight the question is, if you were able to travel anywhere in the world, if you, if you were able to um, to visit any city, any country, where would you like to go? I'm not talking about like here in El Salvador. If your dream is to visit in a specific city here in El Salvador, all right, go ahead, you know, share that with us. But if you want to travel anywhere, if you ever had the chance to go that to that place, what place would that be? And why would you like to go there? So the first person to answer this question tonight is going to be Pablo. So tell me, Pablo, if you had the chance to go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? Um, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um, I'm going to... Um, Belfast, uh, Dublin, del norte, Irlanda, Belfast. Okay. Why would you like to go to Belfast? Because of rock, maybe? Um, I, I, um, um, no, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, you just know that you would like to go to Belfast. <laughs> Is is a is a is a attraction uh, um, after my children. Oh really? 
Yes. Okay, okay. Nice, nice, nice. Very good. So yeah, Belfast, a very good option. It's one of the um one of the great cities of the world. So yeah, I think that will be a very, very good option. All right. So we start we start on, you know, very hard because yeah, that's a really really great city. All right, cool, cool, cool. Thank you very much for sharing. Now, let's hear from Edith. How about you, Edith? If you had the chance to visit any country, any city in the world, where would you like to go? Hello, hello. Hello. Um, let me see. Um, I will visit Switzerland because I love its landscape. Okay. Uh, the the most expensive coffee and <laughs> chocolate. All right, very good <laughs> ideas, you know. Also uh, the the watches and the the multi tool knives and all that. But yeah, Switzerland, one of the most interesting and probably, um, I would say, without any doubt, one of the most beautiful countries in the world. It is yes. not too big, not too tiny. You know, it's there, there in terms of size. But it is very interesting. I will honestly love to have the chance to go there. Me and and my um, my girlfriend have been talking about that for a long time. Like that would be an amazing destination for probably uh, a honeymoon. Still very expensive because it's probably one of the most expensive countries in the world. But you know, it, a dream yes. is a, a dream is a dream. So as you mentioned, the most expensive coffee. Probably some of the most expensive chocolates my, you will ever eat. Uh huh. It's my dreams. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, like, uh, going there is just, it's just so so like an ideal and a very good idea. Okay. Voy a enviar la pregunta en el chat para que la tengan también. If you could travel, travel anywhere. We, mm -hmm. oui. sorry guys. So anywhere in the world, where would you go? Significa básicamente si pudieses viajar a cualquier lado del mundo, ¿dónde irías? Sí. Where would you go? All right. Uh, ahora sí, vamos a ver. What about the case for Neftali? Have you ever thought about that, Neftali? If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? And why? Hey, hi, green. Hello there. Uh, so I like uh, was I like uh, uh, maybe uh, to Russia. Russia. Russia, yes. Okay, why Russia? Uh, they they, they have they have yes they have <laughs> a una rara cultura, podría decir. <laughs> yeah, that's about true, you know. Um, yeah, that's about true. You know, the, 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 the Russian culture is tricky, to say the least, because there are, there are like many communities. I don't know if you know anything about Russia, but I have heard that Russia has like many divisions in, in, in its like own territory. There are many divisions and basically it covers like all kinds of religions, all kinds kinds of practices. And as it is so big, there are even places that are not like registered in, in, in Russia itself. So, yeah, I think Russia is very interesting because, of course, yes. if you go to Moscow, you're going to be seeing like the, the basic Russia, you know, like. Very cold. People, yeah, very cold and high people, very tall people, very white people. But that is not Russia. Actually, I have heard that Russia has more of Mongol people than those white people. But still, um, I think it will be very interesting. O sea, porque they, are not, uh -huh. they are not uh, racist. Not necessarily. They can basically they no. cannot be racist they because I mean yes, yeah, they, they, they have tienen, o sea, comunidades que básicamente todavía son, ¿cómo decirlo? 
son muy anticuadas. O sea, en Rusia, según lo que yo sé, ¿verdad? Hay comunidades que, que son, o sea, extrañísimas, pero como el país es tan grande, o sea, que puede, es cuna de todos esos, esos, ese tipo de prácticas. Entonces, ajá, se supone que tiene muchas etnias, muchas religiones, eh, comunidades, o sea, tan alejadas unas de otras que pareciera como que están incluso en otro continente. So yeah, that's that's Russia. So I see why I see why you know someone would like to go there. However, there are a lot of conflicts with Russia right now, so it would not be advisable at this time. But still, Russia will be a, a very good a very good country to go to. Already then, let's move on, and now we're gonna hear from Evelyn. How about you, Evelyn? Where would you like to go if you ever had the chance to visit any country or any city in the world? And why? Good evening, teacher. Evening. Uh, I like Italia. Italy. Italy. Mm -hmm. um, Venecia. Venecia. Okay, Venice. Uh, uh, cultura, club. No se dice cultura. Culture. Culture. Up. Uh, culture. Um. Food. Canales que están ahí, más que oh. todo en Venecia. Mm -hmm. mm, I know, I know, I quiero ver. I, for people. Mm -hmm. mm, y por, y por el lengu language, el language. idioma. Okay, because mm -hmm. of the Italian language. Only, only teacher. Okay, you, in my case, I think Venice will not be one of my top cities on the list, but I also consider that it is a very interesting city. Uh, for the language, that will be totally me because I want to learn Italian. I, that's one of my dreams, one of my desires. I will love it if I was able to learn Italian. I consider it's, it's easy for someone who knows Spanish, learning Italian or Portuguese is relatively mm -hmm. easy. Like most of the things you have to do is like adapt to a different lexicon and a, a different pronunciation, but it's not too tricky because many words are very similar. Of course, there are going to be some grammatical aspects, some words that are going to be different, but it's not too different. It's not like learning German or learning French. Um, but yeah, I would love to learn Italian. I would love to visit Italy because of that mainly. Um, so yeah, I think also the, ch the Venice ch channels, Channels, sí. Yo iba a decir canales, pero no, canales es, es, es eh, para otro tipo de, de cosas. So, the Venice channels, Venice, Venice canals. I don't, I'm not sure right now if it's canals or channels. Okay. But yeah, Venice, the city of Venice is one of the most sí. attractive cities for tourists in, in Italy. El puente, el puente Rialto creo que sí, es interesante. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sí, entonces, eh, sí, Italia, o sea, es uno de los... Bueno, la, la ciudad de Venecia en Italia es una de las más interesantes, más atractivas para los turistas. Así que también podría encontrarse uno con personas de muchas partes del mundo allí. So that would be other, another interesting thing to do, you know, um, going to, to Venice. Okay. Uh, now, how about you, Claudia? If you ever had the chance to travel anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? Um... I dream of going to one of country where you can see the northern light, light. Mm -hmm. uh, could be Finland, mm -hmm. Greenland, uh, Dinamarca, I don't know, Denmark, Den Denmark, Denmark, Iceland, uh, Norway. Uh, Any of the Nordic countries where you could see the northern lights? Yes. Uh, Um, in fact, in Canada, uh, Colby. Mm -hmm. Yes, Canada yeah. would be another. Okay, so basically the dream is to see the Northern Lights, no matter what country you can go to. Nice. That, that is very cool, you know, to like have the dream, but not necessarily have a specific country where you would like to go. Um, but yeah, in terms of like culture, I think all of those countries are very, are, are very similar. When you're talking about Norway, Denmark, Finland, um, 
Sweden, Sweden, Sweden yeah, Sweden. thank you. Sweden, Iceland, all of them are very similar. Greenland, not necessarily because it's very apart from all of them, but they are very similar in terms of culture, in terms of people. However, they're different in terms of language because all of them, according to what I know, have different languages. However, they are very open to languages. Um, I had the chance when I lived in the U.S., I had the chance to meet a girl who was from Finland, and she said that she only knew, only, only knew seven languages. And for me, that was like, what? Seven languages? I mean... Muy rara la cultura, teacher. Sí, pero eso, o sea, ella me dijo que, no, yo solo, solo sé siete idiomas, yo, ¿qué? O sea, en mi país a mí me mandaron aquí para Estados Unidos porque supuestamente era especial porque hablaba inglés mejor que mis compañeros y vos sabés siete idiomas, ¿cómo? And then she started mentioning, like, her classmates probably they speak Portuguese, Spanish, um, they speak Swiss, they speak um, French, obviously English. Uh, and yeah, so like a, a German, um, did I say French already? I don't know. But there was like a huge list. For her, for example, she said that she only knew Finnish. Um, she knew German. She knew Spanish a little bit. She said that Spanish was something she was working on. Um, she also knew a little bit of Portuguese and um, French, some Arabic, And a little bit of um, Cantonese or, or Chinese, if you want to call it that. But yeah, those were the seven languages she was learning. And in my case, it was like, geez. I mean, because they start learning languages since a very young age. Like before they even go to school. She says that she, before they even go to school, they have to learn at least two languages. But she was behind of her classmates. Most of her, most of her classmates, she says that, or well, she said at least by that time, that they already were fluent in three languages and knew around 10 languages. O sea, pero es algo impactante, la verdad, de algunos de esos países, pues por la forma, verdad, en la que los educan. Porque para nosotros, por ejemplo, o sea, yo siempre he pensado que es una, sería una muy buena idea que a los estudiantes acá se les impartiesen clases de español desde kinder. O sea, porque pues ese, ese entonces es cuando el cerebro se desarrolla de mejor manera y adapta, ¿verdad? De mejor manera las conexiones necesarias para pues adquirir el conocimiento en un idioma. Pero un momento, clase, un momento, que ya viene la lluvia y tengo que cerrar la puerta, si no ahorita va a estar golpeando toda la noche. Entre la ropa. <risa> Es que si no es mentira, si no va a estar toda la noche con ese, con ese molestar. Bueno, pero eso, o sea, lo que les decía, a mí se me hizo en serio tan sorprendente el, el saber eso, o sea, fue como, wow, import, o sea, impresionante, la verdad. Pero bueno. Teacher. Sí. But, but, is, but, but it is true that learning a language is easier to learn another language. That's what they say. Once you have learned a language, it's like the gates open, you know, for your brain. Pero the only thing is that normally you will have to do that during your teenage years. Like it's not something. A ver, si hablamos acerca de eso, acerca de la forma en la que o cómo funciona el cerebro, se supone que, o sea, la, el aprendizaje de los idiomas está muy fortalecido entre los tres y los seis años. O sea, son las edades en las cuales si ustedes quieren generar conexiones para aprender diferentes idiomas, es allí cuando se tiene que aprovechar ese momento. Pasando de esa barrera de los seis años, eh, es posible aprender tantos idiomas como se requiera o como se pueda uh, tener acceso, ¿verdad? Pero una vez llegamos a los 14 o 15 años, ya es más difícil. O sea, porque en nuestro cerebro, si nosotros, por ejemplo, somos bilingües para ese entonces, sí, es fácil poder adquirir nuevos idiomas. Pero si solamente, so, si somos monolingües aún, nuestro, es, nuestro cerebro está empezando a fosilizarse. Es una función que tiene, o sea, en la cual se supone que las eh, conexiones neuronales se empiezan a acostumbrar y se, y se quedan ahí. O sea, están ya fijas solamente para ese idioma. ¿Se va a adquirir un segundo idioma? Sí, se va a adquirir, pero ya no de manera completa. O sea, van a haber cosas que siempre nos van a fallar. Partes de la gramática, partes del vocabulario. 
En cambio, si se hace eso, por ejemplo, desde el, la edad, o sea, de adolescente, eh, se refuerza de mayor manera. O sea, y es mucho más sencillo, se supone. Entonces, eh, eso al menos, o sea, lo aprendí cuando estaba en las clases, ¿verdad? Al principio de la universidad, que me enseñaron acerca de eso. O sea, las conexiones neuronales que son importantes para poder eh, adquirir un idioma. Entonces, si se pasa de cierta edad, ya es más complicado. Se aprende, porque sí, con, el, con, con trabajo, ¿verdad? Se aprende. Pero ya no se aprende quizás de la misma manera como pudiese ser desde pequeños. Así que, um, o sea, se supone que una vez un niño es capaz de hablar dos idiomas, pues se, se le hace sencillo poder hablar tres, cuatro, cinco, los que sean necesarios. Yo por eso quisiera aprender más idiomas antes de tener un hijo. O sea, de esa forma puedo intentarlo, puedo probar con él o ella. A ver si es cierto, ¿verdad? So yeah, I would honestly love it if I if I have the chance. So that's why I want to learn Italian. And I think I'm gonna push my girlfriend to learn, I don't know, maybe Korean because <laughs> she likes Korea so much. ¿Cuántos idiomas habla, teacher? No, in my case only two. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna stop that too. Yeah. I my last daughter. year last year one of my um uh ¿cómo se llamaban? My new year resolutions for this year was that I wanted to push myself into learning Italian a little bit more. I only know a couple words, a couple things in Italian. I'm not fluent at all. Um, but yeah, I didn't do it. You know, we're basically one month away from the end of the year and I haven't done it just yet. I would like to try it this next year and I will do my best to to try and learn Italian this next year because it is a dream of mine to to learn Italian. You can do this. <laughs> yes, I hope so. I hope so. And I will try my best. And if we cross paths once again, after I have learned Italian, I can tell you, guys, I'm learning French now and it's easier. <laughs> French. <laughs> But we'll see. We'll see about that. Okay. Yes, it, um, if I see. No. Yeah, of course we can meet, you know, we live very close. So yeah, <laughs> we can yes, practice. In, we can practice. Caso, uh -huh. Yes. Eh, fíjese que le voy a comentar algo, nada más, vaya uno así de mayor, ya a veces cuesta, digamos, aprenderse un tercer idioma, digamos, este sería mi tercer idioma, y lo siento un poco más difícil porque mezclo algunas palabras con otro idioma. Esa es otra de las cosas que pasa, ¿cuál es el segundo? El segundo es el sueco. Oh. Es igual con, que el, finland, el finlandés. Con razón estaba ahí, Sweden, Sweden, Sweden. <risa> <risa> Esto fue ahí, que ver, seis años. Por eso. Ah, interesante. Y este, lo que es Noruega, eh, Dinamarca, Suecia y este, Finlandia, los eh, quien puede hablar cualquiera de esos idiomas lo entienden, pero no son diferentes dialectos, uh -huh. pero se escriben con diferentes letras. También, ¿verdad? Diferentes... Se parece el idioma, pero es diferente, digamos, letras. Uh -huh. Eso le decía, y a mí el inglés siento que me está costando. ¿De verdad? Yes. ¿Pero cuánto tiempo yes. lleva? Con eh, inglés. Inglés, que ver desde el principio de año, desde que empezamos acá. Desde el primer, desde el principio. Pero, pues siento yo que le, le va bien. O sea, lo que ya lleva no está tan mal, porque, o sea, entiende la mayoría. A veces eso es algo complicado. Obviamente la producción es lo que más nos importa, ¿verdad? Siempre. Llegar a producir, a, a, a comunicar lo que nosotros pensamos. Pero pues, igual. Pero genial vivir en Suecia. ¿Cómo fue vivir en, 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 en Suecia, fue verdad? Sí, sí muy limpio. Diferente Uy. cultura. Sí, muy me imagino. Diferente cultura y, este, ¿cómo le podría decir? Gente, igual, racismo siempre hay, pero hay más gente amable ahí en ese caso. Uh -huh. Todos son muy amables, son, o sea, la amabilidad ahí es lo primero y, digamos, la seguridad de los peatones, los niños y todo. Los niños van en vuelo en esos países. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend pues, Sweden more than Norway? Sweden. More than Norway. En Noruega, sí. Uh -huh. ¿Cuál sería son mejor igual. desde su punto de vista? En segundo lugar está Sweden, pero okay. Norway es primero. Es lo que he escuchado yo, es lo que he escuchado, que dicen que, o sea, que Noruega es, es otro mundo. Pero Noruega no quiere gente con, con pelo negro, ¿eh? ellos les dicen Spar Hubert. Ah, oh, de verdad. Negra, sí, correcto, porque hay racistas que sí dicen Spar Hubert, que bueno. significa cabeza negra. No quieren gente con, los que no son rubios ahí los ven así, igual que Checoslovaquia, que son algo racistas. Ok, nice details to have. 
Así que hay yes. que teñirse el pelo y vámonos para Noruega todos. Ok, just kidding. Bueno, a ver. Um, bueno, vamos ahora. Last person that I'm going to be asking the question is going to be Nelson. So tell me, Nelson, if you had the chance to go... Oh, wait, I'm going to ask Isabel as well. But tell me, Nelson, if you ever had the chance to go to another country, another city, where would you like to go? Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I will go to the Peru. Mm, cool. I will go go to Machu Picchu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I... But, uh, but uh, I want to be in Qatar too. <laughs> in the... <laughs> for the for the World Cup. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh well. Yes. You know, I have my my very best friend. Um, she is currently working for Qatar Airways, and uh, she lives in Qatar. But she says that it is terrible. Like the heat is just, yeah, very 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 bad. However, she has the chance to travel. Of course, she works as a flight attendant, so she gets to travel like to many countries and many places. She has seen a lot of cultures so far, and. Uh, Still, she says that it is great, you know, to get to see the world is, is a good opportunity, a good chance, a good adventure. But Qatar probably is one of the hottest countries in the world. So, yeah, if you ever go there, be prepared for that because it's going to be hot. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, another thing for Machu Picchu, I have heard that there are some packages like tour packages that can help you go to Machu Picchu. Not cheap because it's not necessarily cheap. But it's not as expensive as one could imagine to go to Machu Picchu. They say that that the like for per person you can be spending around eight hundred dollars, and I think eight hundred is not like a huge amount, you know, as one may think. So yeah, if you if it's a dream of yours, probably do some digging on that because they heard I have heard that um some people are staying in good hotels, you know, going to Machu Picchu and doing some touring in Peru. They have spent around that much. I'm not sure, as I said, but they say that it's it's possible. So yeah. Okay. And uh, last but not least, Isabel, what do you think? What would be your idea? If you ever had a chance to travel to any country or any city in the world, where would you like to go? Hello, hello there, Isabel. Bueno, parece que hay problemas de conexión. Hello, oh, ah, there we go. La conexión está Ahí bien, está. ¿no? Sí, sí, sí. <laughs> justo okay. estaba diciendo. But tell uh, me. I, I would like to go to Korea because I like your music, your culture, your food, fashion, and the K-dramas and your opportunity to study. Okay, so yeah. Um, South Korea sounds, you know, it's according to some 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 um, documentaries that I have seen, it is similar to, to Japan in some ways because it's still, it's like a traditional country. They have like a lot of um, the original culture is still present. However, they say it's it's raining here too. It's raining very hard, and that's why probably I'm speaking a little bit louder. But okay, um, they say that South Korea has like a lot of traditions, and like it is a very traditional country. But at the same time, it uh also is modern. You know, it's not as Japan because in Japan it's all all like old fashioned and like culture is very respected. In South Korea, they say that most of the like cultural aspects of it have been modernized, have been adapted to the people, and uh, they have grown on in time. But still, you know, all those Asian countries are a very good pick for for uh, like a, an exchange of culture and like a new breeze in the world. I think those are very very good examples. All right. But, okay, class, we are now going to go to talk about the topic for tonight. And the topic we're going to be discussing 
is going to be messages with tell and ask. Tell and ask. Esto es bastante fácil de entender. Ahora, antes de entrar en el tema, solamente quiero comentarles una cosa. En inglés es algo bastante co complicado, ¿verdad? El hecho de comunicarse con otras personas y referirse a ellos como usted. Es una característica que nuestro idioma tiene y que nos ayuda a comunicarnos de una mejor manera cuando estamos tratando de ser respetuosos. Diferente también a las palabras que se pueden utilizar cuando estamos tratando de demostrar algún nivel de autoridad sobre otras personas. Pero el usted es algo que nos ayuda, nos resulta muy útil para poder verdad demostrar eso, para poder demostrar que a alguien le guardamos respeto, que a alguien tal vez eh, estamos tratando de tener una conversación en como decirlo de cierta, de cierta forma en una manera nivelada. Ahora, otra de las cosas es también con la ausencia de una palabra específica para decir usted, se da el fenómeno, ¿verdad?, de que, por ejemplo, los niños o los hijos de personas hispanas que vienen o viven en Estados Unidos o nacen en Estados Unidos, tienden a ser, en cierta forma, irrespetuosos en español. Pero eso se da debido a que en el, en el inglés no existe una palabra para, una palabra general para ser respetuoso. Entonces, o sea, las personas simplemente dicen tú, ¿verdad? Tú aquí, tú allá, tú esto, tú lo otro. Entonces, por eso mismo es que se hace tan difícil a veces, es tan complejo que un niño sea respetuoso y le diga a usted, a los padres, porque esa palabra no tiene cabida en el léxico regular, ¿verdad? De los niños, en lo que normalmente ellos están expuestos a, a utilizar. Esto se los comento porque sí existen algunas formas en las cuales se puede presentar eh, un nivel de respeto que hasta, hasta cierta medida llega a funcionar casi como un usted. Claramente no es lo mismo, pero eh, demuestra, ¿verdad? Como con quienes somos respetuosos y con quienes no lo somos. En esta conversación y en el tema de justo eh, adelante, vamos a entender un poco más a qué me refiero con eso, ¿verdad? De ser respetuosos hasta cierta medida con alguien y en cómo se utiliza eso en inglés. So, for this conversation we have um, two people being part of it as regular. It is going to be this time the secretary and Mr. Kale. Those are the two people being part of this conversation. And the conversation should go as following. Oh, sorry, guys. Okay. Good morning, Parker Industries. Hello. May I speak to Miss Graham, please? I'm sorry. She's not in. Can I take a message? Yes, please. This is Mr. Kale. Is it G A? L E? No, it's K A L A L E. All right. Please tell her our meeting is on Friday at 2 30. Friday at 2 30. And could you ask her to call me this afternoon? My number is 646 555 4031. 646 555 4031. Yes, Mr. Kale. I'll give Miss Graham the message. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, so that's the way in which the conversation is supposed to be developed. Now, we're going to take a look at the topic. Esa sería entonces la forma, la información, verdad, que tenemos para, para este tema. A ver, cuando ustedes utilizan la palabra tell, Ustedes están, hasta cierta medida, estableciendo un nivel de autoridad sobre la persona a la quien le están pasando el mensaje. Independientemente de cuál sea el mensaje o cuál sea eh, la labor, la indicación que ustedes estén dando, si ustedes utilizan tell, están siendo autoritarios. ¿sí? Vamos a decirlo así. O sea, están diciéndole a la persona, di o haz esto. Sí, principalmente es di, o sea, como decirlo como salvador anda a decirle ok entonces eso es el tell en cambio en ask es pregunta o pide ¿Sí? en esta oración de acá sería a pesar de que utilizamos el please tell her este please sí suena un poco un poco correcto verdad claro para que la oración no sea tan directa no suene tanto como una orden 
Pero independientemente de que se utilice el please o no, esto es una orden, ¿ok? O sea, el utilizar el please es más una cuestión de amabilidad y no necesariamente, o sea, de amabilidad más bien al utilizar el, 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 el ¿cómo sería? De etiqueta, ¿sí? No necesariamente de que esta persona es amable o respetuosa con la posición de la otra. Me refiero con esta persona a Mr. Kale, ¿verdad? Esto lo que nos deja entender es que Mr. Kale, como sabe que en ese momento está hablando con alguien que es una secretaria, él considera, o sea, si esta persona, digamos, es un, um, un panelista o algo así, considera que está por arriba de su nivel de autoridad, o sea, el nivel de autoridad de la secretaria. Entonces, por eso le dice, dile, ¿sí? A la otra persona sería Miss Graham, que la reunión es el viernes a las 2.30. Y en la otra oración, justo, inmediato, ¿verdad? Acá, utiliza la otra forma. And could you ask her to call me? ¿Por qué entonces ahora dice ask her? Bueno, fácil. Es porque con Miss Graham, ¿sí? Mr. Kale, se encuentra en un nivel bastante equiparado. Así que, por eso a Miss Graham no necesariamente le puede ordenar qué hacer, sino que pide de favor que Miss Graham le llame, ¿sí? o sea, como que le retorne la llamada. En cambio, a la secretaria, él sí siente que tiene la autoridad suficiente para poder decirle, ¿verdad? Que haga X o Y actividad. Entonces, eso es lo, más, lo básico de entender a la hora de utilizar el tell and ask. También hay otra diferencia. If you ask, for example, something like this, tell the staff to the meeting is on Friday. Solamente the meeting is on Friday, sin utilizar el that. Tell the staff the meeting is on Friday. Esa es una oración que hasta cierta medida suena como un recordatorio. Okay. Tell the staff the meeting is on Friday. Dile al staff eh, sobre la reunión del viernes, por decir así. Algo así lo podríamos decir en español, sí, dile al staff sobre la reunión del viernes, o a, a los empleados sobre la reunión del viernes. En cambio, al utilizar that, la, la oración se convierte en una oración mucho más autoritaria, o sea, llegamos a un nivel más alto, y ahora en sí lo que va a significar es, dile al staff que la reunión es el viernes. Al utilizar ese que hay en el medio, estamos dando una orden directa, estamos haciendo un recordatorio, y hasta cierta medida casi como Um, o sea, decir a las personas, ¿verdad? Que deben estar ahí. O sea, es su obligación estar allí en la reunión del viernes. Entonces, ese that cambia mucho el significado de la oración inicial, porque lleva a entregar ese significado extra, esa fuerza extra, en lo que al principio simplemente, ¿verdad? Era información, ahora es más una orden al utilizar el that. ¿sí? Tell the staff that the meeting is on Friday. Entonces, ese that convierte una eh, indicación en una orden. Eh, lo mismo sería, aunque, aunque lo utilicemos en forma de pregunta, básicamente el mismo cambio sucede. Could you tell the staff that the meeting is on Friday? It's basically the same. We're still turning an instruction into an order. Now, when you, use, when you use ask, as I said before, it is more as if you're requesting a favor. Um, so yeah, you're telling one person to ask someone else to do something. Therefore, this is more like a favor. I feel like I'm in the, uh, 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 sorry, at a level ground with this person. And that's why I'm asking that person to do something for me. Um, same if we use it as a question. If we say, could you ask him to call me this afternoon? It's basically the same thing. You know, we are still being respectful to the other person. Um, so that's how we were supposed to use it. That's why We have tell and ask in English. Now, what we're going to do right now is that we're going to go to practice this conversation. We're going to practice it for a little bit. And then we're going to come back to the last activity, which is going to be, as I mentioned, a reading activity. So I hope you guys are ready. We're only going to do two breakout rooms this time around. So please have everybody one practice. Uh, sorry, one thing I, I want to clarify before we go into the breakout rooms is that one of the things I will try to be listening to is going to be the spelling that is very important. In this case, it will be J-A-L-E for this one, for Gail. And 
kale, which is going to be K-A-L-E. Also, the number spelling, because we have to be practicing this very often so that we know how to give, for example, our own phone number. And for this occasion, it's going to be 646-555-4031 or 4031 as you feel more comfortable. Same with the hour, 2.30 or two and a half. As you, feel, as you feel more comfortable, you can use either or. But all right, those are the points that I will be looking to. And uh, I will be opening the breakout rooms just about now. So you guys can start joining now. Hello. Bien, entonces, si quieren, practiquen ustedes y después vamos eh, los otros dos. Ok, si quieren, empiezo yo como secretary. Ok, me lo sigo yo. Ok, bye. Good morning, Parking Industries. Hello, may I speak to Mr. Graham, please? I'm sorry, she's not in. Can I take a message? Yes, please. This is Mr. Kale. It is J-A-L-E? No, it's K-A-L-E. All oh, right. Please, her head our meeting is on Friday at 2.30. Friday, I do... Theory. And call you and call you ask her to call me this afternoon. The number is six four six five 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 M forty thirty one. Five 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 four zero three one. Yes, Mr. K. Or give Mr. Graham the message. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Next. Okay. Yo soy Mr. Kyle. Yo secretary. Okay. Uh, good morning, Parker Industries. Hello. May I speak to Miss Graham, please? I'm sorry, she's not in. Uh, can I take a message? Yes, please. This is Mr. Kyle. Is it G-A-L-E? No, it's K-A-L-E. All right. Please tell her our meeting is on Friday at two and a half. Uh, Friday at 2.30. And cool, you ask her to call me this afternoon. My number is 646-555-4031. Uh, 646 Yes, Mr. Kale, I'll give Miss... Granham the message. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bien, ahora pueden seguir y, y, y este creo que pueden cambiar ahí el my Graham the message messenger. Messages. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, quienes siguen. Next, next. The next. ¿Quién más sigue? Para la práctica. Hello. Eh, ¿Quién más está, Evelyn? Está Pablo. Pablo, Jeremías. Y Jeremías. Ok. 
eh, van, a, van a practicar, amigos, compañeros. Solo que, buenas noches, yo no tengo la, la imagen, no dice screenshot. Y eso dice es lo que, que lo mandamos por WhatsApp. Compártanla. Es que la mía, ajá, la mía casi no se ve. Por WhatsApp, ahorita, compártanla. Ahorita la voy a compartir, esperen. Ahorita en el grupo de WhatsApp. Va. A ver, ahorita, ahorita. Ahorita, amigo Pablo. Ok. Ahí está ya. Ahorita le envié, pero el internet aquí está, aquí está lloviendo. Ahí está ya. Bueno, ya la pueden ver. Yo voy a ser Mr. Cal. ¿Quién va a ser secretary? Jeremías. Ok, yo, démoslo. Ok, dale, Jeremías. Morning, Parking Industry. Uh, hello, may I speak to Miss Graham, please? I'm sorry, she's not in. Can I take a message? Yes. Please, this is Mr. Carl. It's, it's G-I-L-E. No, it's K-A-L-E. All right. Uh, Please tell her our, our meeting is on Friday at 2.13. Uh, Friday at 2.30. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, And call, you ask her to call me this afternoon. My number is uh, 646. Five 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 four uh four four uh zero three one six four six five 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 four zero three one yes Mr. Kell I give Miss Branham the message thank you goodbye goodbye Ok, Evelyn, vamos a cambiar de, 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 de personaje. Este, Ahora yo soy el secretario, Miguel, ¿usted es qué? Josué, Edith no, Edith no ha participado. Ah, ahí está Edith. Hola, Edith. Hola, hola. Hola. No se escucha. Aló, ¿escuchan a Edith? No. No. Sí, no, no, no se escucha. Hola. Hola, hola, sí. practiquemos. Ah, ok. Compartir, eh, no compartir usted, la pantalla. Sí, hay Fíjese hay que compartir en el grupo de WhatsApp la compartí ahorita. No, no, no pero si aquí, la puede aquí, ver. La está, aquí la está compartiendo ella, Josué. Es que eso quería ah, saber. Okay. Ah, perdón, sí, ahí está. Estaba aprendiendo. Ajá. Ah, dice, ve. Bueno, si quiere practiquemos. Este, yo soy el secretario, usted es qué? Hello. Uh, eh, ¿Le parece? Okay. Uh, I bueno, want to be the secretary, please. You want? Okay. Can you do it now? Hello, morning, Parque Industrial. Hello, my my speak to me. My speak to Mr. to Mr. Graham, please. I'm sorry, she's not in. Can I take a message? Yes, please. This is Mr. Kale. Uh, is it G A I E? No. Is it uh, Kale K A I E? All right. Please tell her our meeting is on Friday at. Two thirty. Oh, Friday two thirty. Oh, Friday two thirty. And and uh, and call you ask to a uh, call you ask her to call me this this afternoon. Uh, my number is six four six five 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 four zero three eight one. Six four six 
Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bueno, bueno, ¿quién sigue? Siguiente. Oigo yo, yo, secretary. Dele. Con Jeremía o con Evelyn. All right, so it seems that we were having a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was it was great. I was uh, having a lot of fun also looking at you guys practicing. You guys were being very proactive. So that's also very, very good for all of you and uh, for your practice. Now, what we're going to be doing in the last couple of minutes that we have left is that we're going to sorry we're going to make groups and we're going to work on some reading so for those who are still coming i'm going to give you guys a little bit and uh, a little bit of time and we'll see a ver lo que vamos a estar practicando en este par de minutos que aún tenemos disponibles será esta parte de acá sí es una lectura así que todavía tenemos algo de tiempo verdad para realizarla Vamos a estar reali a, realizándola de forma dividida. No va a ser como la vez anterior, que todo, teníamos que leer absolutamente toda la información. Ahora serán grupos de más o menos de cuatro personas para poder eh, realizar la, la, la lectura, ¿verdad? Que no necesariamente sea eh, todo para todos. A ver, la forma en la que lo tendríamos que hacer sería la primera persona lee el primer párrafo, la segunda persona lee el segundo, la tercera persona va a leer... Eh, tres puntos de estos que están marcados en rojo y la cuarta persona leería el último punto, el último eh, trozo de información corto, ¿verdad? El, el, el párrafo corto que tenemos acá disponible. Entonces, debería ir de la siguiente forma. What do you do in a situation like this? You're eating dinner with your friends at a nice restaurant. You're having a great time when a phone rings at the, next, at the table next to you. A man takes out his phone and starts talking loudly about problems he's having with his girlfriend. He talks for almost 10 minutes. Then, ha this happens all the time, on buses, in restaurants, everywhere. Many people find cell phones useful in their day-to-day -day lives, but we've all sat next to someone talking too loudly on the cell phone. You may want to tell the loudmouth to end the conversation, but let the management take care of uh, noisy customers, you can only control your own behavior. Here are a few rules. Off means off. Respect the rules of restaurants and other public places. If a sign says, turn off cell phones, don't use your phone. Keep private conversations private. Speak softly and for short time. Try to move away from other people. Lights off, phone off. Never take calls in a theater or at the movies. Pay attention. Talking on the phone while driving is dangerous. And watch where you're going um, when you're walking down the street and talking on the phone. As more people use cell phones, things, only, uh, things are only going to get worse. So the next time you're getting ready to make a call, Stop and consider the people around you. Muy bien. Ahora entonces me gustaría saber quiénes van a ser los, los que sean parte del primer grupo. Pueden hacerlo, ¿verdad? Con, al alzar la mano. Eh, entonces vamos a formar el primer grupo. Cuatro personas, ya les dije, el primer párrafo. Eh, o sea, lo vamos a dividir en cuatro partes. El primer párrafo una persona, el segundo párrafo otra. Luego los primeros tres puntos para otra persona. El último punto y el último trozo de información sería para la última persona. Entonces vamos a hacerlo entonces ahorita con... Claudia, el primer párrafo, Jenny, el segundo, Pablo, los primeros tres puntos, y tenía, tendríamos en este caso a Isabel terminando, ¿verdad?, eh, la lectura. Muy bien. So, Paul, Claudia, perdón, when you're ready. What do you do in a situation like this? You are eating dinner with friends at a nice restaurant. You are having a great time 
when a phone ring at the table next to you. A man take out his phone and start talking loudly about problems he is having with his girlfriend. He talks for almost 10, 10 minutes. This happens all the time on buses and restaurants everywhere. Many people find cell phone used in the day day to day life, but with a sadness next to somewhere, take it to laundry on the cell phone. Cell phone. The many want to take to long months to end the conversation about letting the man management take care on the music customer. You can I only encounter you only the railroad, they are uh, new rulers. Okay. Of men, of men's of. Respect the rules, rules of restaurants and other public place. If a thing says true of cell phones, don't you see your phone? Keep private, conversation private. Speak softly and for a short time, three uh, to move uh, away from other people. Lights of phone off. Never take calls in a theater or at the movies. Pay attention, talking. Talking on a cell phone while driving is dangerous. And watch where you're uh, going when you're walking down the street and talking on the phone. All right, now Isabel. As more people use cell phone, things are only going to get worse. So the next time you're getting ready to make a call, stop and consider the people around you. All right, very good. Bueno, nos pasamos un poquito con Pablo porque leímos el último punto, pero igual. It's okay, no problem. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's okay, no biggie. All right, um, so, uh, ¿quién sería el siguiente grupo? Tenemos chance para hacer un grupo más. Si, si la, la función de la mano no funciona, igual pueden decir, ¿verdad? Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> okay, we have in this case Macy. Thank you. Hi, teacher. Okay. Uh, we also have, um, let me see, Evelyn. And I only need two more people. So who are going to be those two? Okay, so N Macy, Evelyn, I think uh, Nelson and Nathalie. All right. So, Macy, you may start if you're ready. Okay. What do you do in a situation like this? You are eating dinner with friends at night restaurant. You are having a great time when a phone rings on the table next to you. A man takes out his phone and start talking loudly about problems he's having with his girlfriend. He talks for almost 10 minutes. This happens all the time on houses, buses, sorry, in restaurants, anywhere. Okay, uh, Evelyn? Many people feel cell phones used in their today live, but we be all sat next to someone to tell the love to end the conversation, but let the manager take care of no customer. You can only control your own bail. Here are few clear. Okay, Pablo, uh, sorry, no Pablo, uh, Nelson? Of mean of, respect the rulers of restaurant and other public place. If a sign says to drop cell phone, don't use your phone. 
keep private conversation private. Six often and four at short time. Try move away from other people. Lie off on off. Never take calls in a theater or at the movies. Okay, and Neftali. Pay attention, talking on cell phone while, while driving is dangerous. And what's there you don't when you can, when you start walking down the street and talking on the cell on the phone. Ask more people with cell phone. Things are only going to get worse. So the next time you're getting ready to make a call, stop and consider the people around you. Okay, Doki, then. Very, very good. Thank you, thank you guys very much. Muy bien. Entonces, con eso cerramos la penúltima clase. Mañana tenemos la última. Um, ¿Quién quedó encargado de, de recoger el dinero para la pizza? Mañana ya saben que pueden venir también, ¿verdad? De particular, no hay problema. Sí. Ok, guys. So, uh, thank you very much for, for tonight. Thank you for your attention and participation. Tomorrow, as I mentioned, we're going to have our last class of this, um, of this module. And yeah, have a really good night. See you tomorrow, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.